Lawrence we're waiting on. Let me just get everything set up and add. Make sure we've yeah. got presentation ready. He'll be along shortly, I'm sure. Okay, so we also have, um, so we're going to do a survey in between the end of your presentation and the Q&A, just so that we can find out exactly how many people are in the webinar. Just as you know, uh, we might only have like 20 devices logged in, but they might be showing. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could be broadcasting it to a, a room full of people, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah, because it's just normally we get like lower numbers on the Apprentice ones, but yeah. it's only because of that. So we're running a survey just to get a better idea not everyone will answer it though so we won't know exactly still no that's okay that's fine yeah yeah i remember it from last time there were um there were an awful lot more people involved actually than we suspected you know, yeah which is uh, which is good yeah no it's just like some people are, like get a bit scared when they see the number they're like oh 20 people or like tw 27 people but it's it's more Yeah, the thing is, though, even when you get a low number, you know, like that, and uh, and and they're not broadcasting it to other people. If you pick up a project from from that, and you've presented to twenty seven people, then it's worthwhile. Yeah, I mean that's good then. Trouble is, though, you can never actually with the, with the webinars, or it's really difficult to do. You can never quite marry up the fact that you've done a cpd or a presentation to somebody with the fact that you've actually won a project at the end of it that's the yeah. difficult thing yeah i guess some things are like just hard to to track unless like we had a couple of things from some webinars where they have ended up getting an email directly from the webinar so they know that it's them mm. but obviously that doesn't always happen yeah yeah not to worry it's all about education today anyway isn't it just letting people know what uh what's possible yeah <clears throat> that's why i've got lawrence involved because he's really good at this yeah the more the merrier <laughs> especially with these things bounce you can bounce off of each other as well yeah um let's see i wonder i wonder what's happened to lawrence mm. He'll, he'll be along in a bit, unless he's forgotten what day it is again, <laughs> like he did last week. That was funny. Oh, hopefully <laughs> not. <laughs> we just run, yeah, it, run right. it alone yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> with, um, with this presentation, both Lawrence and I will be able to advance the slides independently from other, won't we? Um, sorry, what did you say? Lawrence and I for this presentation we'll be able to advance the slides independently from one another won't we so it doesn't yeah, need one, both, one yeah we can, i thought as much yeah yeah because we've done them before when one person has to <clears throat> remain in control if you like of advancing the slides along oh but I yeah think, yeah with with this one we can both do it can't we yeah you can both do it yeah that's good interesting to find out the average age wouldn't it of the apprentices as well because i think when you tend to think about apprentices you automatically think of young people yeah but, but i think these days it's not necessarily the case that they're always you know 18 19 years old yeah no so i actually did an apprenticeship in my 20s as well so yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I think it's more of a popular thing as well for people who want to change career as well. You don't necessarily want to go to u- university and things like that. No, 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 of course. I mean, we're having conversations with um, with with my daughter at the moment because she's um, she's 14. Oh, yeah. And uh, they're beginning to get quite career focused in school, talking about, you know, the, 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 the opportunities for apprenticeships or universities and so on. And um, my wife is is more on the university side of things, where am I more on the apprentice side of things? You know what? It depends on what you get, what you do at university. I think really, but like for me, it was not worth my while. Um, it was the apprenticeship did a lot better for me. Um, I think it just completely depends on the industry you're trying to get into. Yeah, absolutely. It's just those those um, those fees that you incur these days are horrendous, aren't they? I know. I cry when I think about it because I know that I've got so much like um, like technical debt, um, but it's like I'll probably never pay it off. And I never really benefited from going to university for like, so it is what it is. Yeah. I bet you had a laugh though. I, I didn't even really, I never like had the, like the nightlife kind of thing. Like, was, like, going out. <laughs> I just didn't, I still lived at home and everything. So I just didn't. Oh, well. Um, hi Lawrence. Hi, yeah. Good. I am in. <laughs> I was a bit worried. Sorry. Hi, Lawrence. I'm going to be masked up, I'm afraid, because I'm in the office. So we've got compulsory masks. Okay. Um, we're here. As long as you can hear me. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Perfectly. Yeah. Perfectly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Okay. So, um, has anyone got any questions before? Because obviously we've still got twenty minutes. So, if you guys are happy, then we can all kind of go away, grab a coffee, come back. Or if you have any questions, we can answer those. You okay, right. Lawrence? Yeah, I, I'm good for questions. I think uh, you're going to be running the slides, aren't you, Matt? Matt like normal. Yeah, I just yeah, checked with the line. Way. Actually, we we can. I will do. Yeah, absolutely. But we do have the ability that both of us can actually control the slides as well, which is quite good sometimes. Okay, cool. So, um, but I'll I'll um, I'll we'll just do it in the usual fashion when we've done these things together, and I'll I'll do the. Is you know, um, is there a laser pointer um? type function um alana um let me no. just check so we have a so uh, i don't know if this changes setting for you but can you see, can you see my mouse i can see your mouse yeah yeah um so if you go to the very bottom of your screen can you see a white bar at the bottom that has yeah. like there should be like a mouse pointer button if you go onto it and press pointer instead of private pointer then uh, you can, everybody can see where your mouse is. Has that changed? Yes, I can oh, see. I can it. see. Yeah. I can right, see okay. Both of them, yeah. There we go. Right. Well, if I need to, then I'll turn that on and do some indications. But that's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think I think Lawrence with this one, of course, because we're doing because this is an apprentice webinar focused on um, focusing focusing on uh, you know educating the the, the the people that will be coming into or just beginning to come into the industry now I guess um, we can be a lot more uh, focused on the um, the stuff that we actually do yeah you know we have to be absolutely impartial when we do the full CPD but we can we can talk a little bit ma- a little bit more here about what's possible and what we can offer. Yeah, brilliant. Sounds good. Okay, All right. Well, I need to go and tidy up the customer centre because I've left it in an absolute tip. So, <laughs> so if we just <laughs> join back minutes. here for five two, yeah, then then that's fine. So you we can all go away and come back for five two, yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, perfect. See you in a bit. Okay. Fantastic, dozy. Should we leave? Should we leave? Oh, Alana's left already. No, you can still. What is it? I was. I was. Oh, there you are. You're back here. I was going to say, should we leave properly? Leave and come back, or just leave the whole thing running and just thing open, mute? just because I've set everything up now and I will have to set it up Brilliant. again if we start. So no problem. So yeah. I just turn. I can just turn off the audio and the and the camera. And the camera. And yeah. And... Got it.
<sighs> you tidied up, mate. Yeah, yeah, just about. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if there's a way I can I can angle myself so I don't have this massive lightsaber behind me. Yeah, it's just, it's just the gap in the curtain, isn't it? Yeah, there's a um, there's a missing <clears throat> slat in the. So I can't. I've tried pulling it over, but the there's actually a missing thing. <laughs> so I can't even. I can't even pull it over. Uh, are you in the Tenby room? Are you? No, I'm in Richard Hayward's office. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I need to get the the hard wire into my laptop at the office because I don't have it set up on the Wi-Fi here. Oh, right. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, I've camped out in Rich's office. I was hoping that you were going to tell me that you couldn't hear a word I was saying, and then I'd be able to take my mask off. But if uh, <laughs> you scuffed me there, yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's not my rules and stuff, but. I'm comfortable if you take it off for the purposes of this, but you're in the office, obviously. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, that's the, that's the thing. I think I'll, uh, I'll I'll have to leave it on, just um, just because. But uh, but yeah, if anyone can't hear me, if they if they best put it in the chat, then I can take it off. Well, we'll see. We'll monitor it throughout. Um um yeah so i think so obviously i'm guessing you guys know as well as when when we do go into the room we'll go in a like a minute or something early just to check everything works um if well there is going to be a delay like a couple seconds delay because it takes like a bit to record it so there's that awkward silence at the beginning then i'll introduce you then you can start and then la -dee -da, -dee da then you say you get to the end and then you can say um um, maybe if you just say when you're finished presentation, then I'll come back in and just talk about the survey. Yeah, of course, no problem. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think we'll do it. that. We'll do that before the Q and A. Yes, yeah, so that's before the Q and A. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no problem. Otherwise, no one will answer the survey because they're just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, we've had confirmation there. We're out. Oh yeah. From uh, Adrian. Oh, okay. Oh hi. Thanks, Adrian. <laughs> Okay, so we are just going to start this in four minutes, just in case there are anyone else. Um, yeah, so we just need to be fair because it starts at one o'clock.
Okay, just one minute to go. <laughs> this is all right. <laughs> I'm just going to mute that. Okay, guys, so we're going to start the webinar. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, so this is uh, the Electrical Apprentice webinar with the Grand and Lawrence and Matt will be your speakers today. If you have any questions, please pop them in the chat box because we'll be doing a Q&A session at the end. And now I'm going to pass it over to you guys. Terrific. Thank you, Alana. Um, yeah, look, welcome, everybody. Um, thanks for giving up some of your day to join us on the on this webinar, you can see the subject matter in front of you there, the connected home. So uh, I'll just introduce myself and, uh, and I'll ask Lawrence to, to do likewise for himself. So my name's Matt, um, as you can see, um, our name's there on the slide. Um, I look after uh, all things to do with training within the Grand, which is the company that uh, Lawrence and I both work for. I'll tell you a little bit about the Grand, uh, not too much in a, in a moment. Um, so I look after all things training and I also look after building information modeling as well. So I know that this is an apprentice webinar today. Um, I don't know what apprentice, apprenticeships you're, you're doing, but if you're into your digital stuff, you might know about digital design, digital construction and so on. And that's kind of what building information modeling is about. So, um, so that's me. I'll just ask Lawrence if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself as well. Yeah, no worries. So uh, hi, everyone. I'm Lawrence. Uh, I am one of the sales managers here at Legrand. Uh, so I look after uh, sales into our electrical wholesale market and into uh, developers, contractors, etc., cetera, um, to help with um, essentially specification of our products. Uh, so um, uh, I'm also one of the specialists in home automation uh, here at Legrand. So uh, if you have any questions, anything like that regarding home automation, home control, uh, by all means, throw them in the chat and uh, let's let's have a little bit of a conversation around it. Terrific. Thank you, Lawrence. So there we go. So just a really, really quick introduction to Legrand. You might know who we are, um, but for the purposes of people who don't, we're Legrand Electric Limited. So we're a French owned company. Um, the headquarters of our company is in uh, Limoges in central France. Um, we employ 37,000 people approximately over the globe. So obviously you can you can tell from that we're quite a big concern. Um, we turn over about 7 billion euros um, globally and we're present in about 180 countries across the globe. So we have got this big, big global um, spread for the, for the products and services that we offer. In the UK, um, which obviously is where Lawrence and I are based, we're structured into six um, individual business units, uh, and those business units are all focused on their own um, product ranges and product sets. You can see them listed across the screen there from left to right, assisted living and healthcare on the left-hand side and through to the user interface on the right-hand side. So in the UK, we probably got about 700 people working for us, and um, uh, we're, we're, we're centralized, if you, if you like, in the UK, in um, Birmingham in the West Midlands, which is where our head office is, and Lawrence is actually there uh, today. Yeah. So, mark. yeah. So, um, that's a really, really quick introduction to Legrand. And I mentioned those six business units. The one that we're focused on today is the user interface that Lawrence works for. So, Lawrence, would you just mind um, expanding a little bit on user interface for a moment? Yeah, sure. So, so essentially, user interface, um, uh, which is my, um, my my neck of the woods over at Legrand, is anything that an end user or, or a building user or a homeowner would interact with when they're when they're around uh, some of the buildings that they're in. Um, so, this includes specific specific product wise our Bitticino door entry um, systems, 
um, our uh, automation systems, either our My Home Up or our um, RTL with Natatmo, both of which we're going to talk about briefly today. Uh, and then our Natatmo products, which are IoT security and temperature control products for, for your home. Uh, then we've got wiring accessories um, uh, or and our domestic circuit protection. So wiring accessories, uh, AKA light switches, plug sockets, et cetera, all of those kind of things. Uh, domestic, uh, domestic circuit protection, consumer units, uh, disc boards, et cetera, those kind of things. Thank you, Lawrence. Okay, so we're going to talk about all of this stuff really on the slide today. You know, we'll start with uh, with the first question on there. I'm not going to read all of those things out because you can see those. Um, but we'll start with simple question at the top. Why a smart home? Because obviously we're talking about the connected home, the smart home and so on. Well, you know, the world is changing massively, isn't it? It's changing at rates that we've not experienced before. Um, and we're, we're, we're super connected, aren't we? Like we never have been before. We only have to look at our current situation that we're, that we're working in now. Our working environment has changed massively over the last two years in the, you know, in the, uh, the circumstances of the, of, of the pandemic. Lots more people are working at home, of course, um, using things like uh, Teams and Skype and Zoom and all sorts of different communication tools and so on to carry on connecting with people all over the globe, whether that's, you know, for work purposes or streaming uh, music or exercise classes, or just for keeping in touch with loved ones. And, you know, every kind of market that we think about now has embraced digitalization, hasn't it? You know, we've, we, we, we've got this scenario on the screen that you can see here. Not so long ago, we used to take all of our news from a newspaper, a printed newspaper. We just don't tend to do that anymore because everything's migrated to the digital realm. And we just pick up our news off tablets, smartphones. You get a notification through of the new, head, new headline that's come through these days. It's on your phone. And of course, with the advent of voice control, all we need to do is just ask for things now. And we've got everything, not just at the tip of your fingertips now, but with a, with a, with a voice command, a word, you can pick up any kind of, um, any kind of uh, notification or news article in terms of the media. But also the way we communicate has changed, as alluded to before, when we talked about Skype and Zoom and all of these kinds of things that we're doing these days. But look at the way communication has changed that we're just displaying on the screen there. So you, you, you kind of get the theme that's moving through. It's almost moving through everyday life now in the way that we're taking on digitization. Even the car, you know, even the car. Um, the way that we drive our cars, you know, we've got all these lovely electric cars coming out now with uh, they're all super connected, aren't they? With with all kinds of things in them. All this really, really clever stuff. A world away from how things were not so long ago, but that's the rate of this digitization that's happening now. So we've looked at media very, very briefly. You've looked at cars, you know, these kinds of things. But we also have this in the home as well. So. What we're displaying on the screen here is 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 the way that we tend to think about a smart home now, which is a lot of different things doing a lot of different functions. Um, and there's some advantages to this approach. There's some disadvantages as well. So, Lawrence, would you mind just uh, elaborating a bit further on what we're actually looking at here? Yeah, sure. So when we think about a smart home, um, we tend to think about them in this way, this kind of disparate um, uh, buy a few products here, buy a few products there, um, uh, so you can control your kettle or so you can control a couple of smart plugs, etc. Uh, and some, sometimes that's brilliant. For the end, end user, that can be great because there's a huge selection of, uh, of products available um, and uh, uh, all different price points. So they can go out there and they can really choose what they want. For a professional like we are or we're becoming, um, uh, is that ideal? Possibly not. Potentially, we want to try and uh, guide people into a more um, uh, uh, infrastructure-based uh, home control system. So a, a control system that's actually built into the fabric of the home not only reduces the number of different apps people have to use, different ways that they have to control their different products, 
but it also reduces the amount of tech waste we produce, for example. It, it means that we can actually have a more uh, cohesive system built in. So not only do you have um, all of your energy savings you can see in one place from all of your different devices, uh, but you can then tailor that as well. You can say, I want to save a little bit more money here. Or I want to save a little bit more energy there. Um, and you can have everything with one kind of design as well. So, so things are all brought in one place. So rather than what we see here with, the, with, with, with all these different devices, what we're going to talk about today is systems that bring everything all in one place and, and, and everything under one, one umbrella, if you like. Uh, and that's really where we're going to start making the real savings, making the real uh, uh, sort of opportunity for us to make some money from our clients and make some deliver some quality products to our clients uh, as a whole system. So, so you see here a few different reasons for a smart home. Those are, all exist within uh, a large sort of ecosystem product like we're talking about today, but with extra benefits, with, with, with additional um, things that you can have on here as well. Yeah, uh, I think two really important things that Lawrence has touched on there. The first is, is, is considering systems as opposed to the individual components that you see on the screen here. Taking a system approach is, is really important. But secondly, Lawrence has alluded to, um, to the cost as well, to cost savings. And it's really savings that we're talking about. I just want to offer you something here with a, with a, a view to the future. So, of course, right now, everybody's heavily investing in um, energy efficiency, aren't they? And we've got the drive to net zero for the 2030 targets and the 2050. And what some of those targets are telling us is that if we improve our existing building stock in terms of um, including smart control in there to help us to monitor and improve our lighting and heating, that will help us to achieve net zero. So actually, there's probably going to be quite an explosion in this type of scenario, in that system approach that Lawrence has alluded to over the coming years. So there's some great, great opportunities here for smart home providers, for system integrators and the like, moving into the coming years and months. So bear that in mind as you know as you go through your the next phases of your career, I would say. So um, just moving on from there, really, let's let's just take a look at um, lighting and automation in, in some simple terms. So what you've got on the um, screen is a typical traditional um, wiring example, as you can see there. You've got a consumer unit over on the right hand side serving the electrical installation. Lighting is operated via traditional switches. As you know, we can do some lighting in, in red on there, some blinds in blue, and we can do some fans. Maybe there's a fan in the closet or the kitchen or something in green. So we can incorporate those kinds of things into our traditional um, wired home. But what can we actually do with it? Not a lot. We can turn lights on and off. We might have two-way switching. We might have some dimming. The things that you can see on the screen. But with a traditional wired home, um, as it says on the T-shirt there, not a lot going on at the moment. If we wanted to integrate more than that, we need to go down those individual components that we can buy off Amazon or, um, um, or, or, or the like. There's not a lot more that we can do with that kind of approach. So, if we think about a smart home setup, you can see the bullet points on the left-hand side of the slide there. There's an awful lot more that we can do, and I'm not gonna read through all of those, those, those things on there, but Lawrence, could you pick out some highlight points? Yeah, so, so some of the big things we can do when we're looking at control of, um, uh, using smart home products is actually bringing things in like groups or, or bringing things in like scenarios. Uh, so as opposed to one button, one function, um, where we, if we want to have uh, lots of different functions in a room, we have to have a huge number of different buttons. Um, or if we want to be able to control uh, a, a light circuit from down in the garden, for example, from somewhere else in the house, uh, you have to have a, a quite a complex run of cabling to actually get from one point to another 
or you have to have a big, um, a, 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 a large control on the wall. So lots of gangs of, um, uh, of switches. With smart home um, controls, you can actually wire all of your devices uh, as a individual circuit to give you that flexibility later, rather than wiring everything as a single circuit, um, and then have a single control that actually triggers those. So you press one button, and a whole load of lights uh, will come on if it's a group circuit, for example. And we'll, we'll have some example pictures coming on in a moment. Um, uh, and then if you have a scenario, uh, alternatively, you could actually have somewhere where you can press a button, for example, and uh, lights come on, the heating comes on to a set level, so music comes on in the background, uh, and maybe your blinds come down as well. Uh, and these are all functions that are really easy to integrate when you've got a smart switch as opposed to a traditional switch. Um, uh, uh, when you can just wire everything around in a uh, maybe in, in a proprietary bus cable, or even nowadays with a um, uh, with a wireless um, Zigbee network, for example. So groups and scenarios, two really important factors of uh, of home control. Uh, uh, different feedbacks. That you can get from our uh, uh, from our switches as well, so you can have a feedback to tell you when a circuit's on as as opposed to when it's off, or when a circuit is acting in a certain way. Uh, uh, you can have voice control, so you can trigger things from a voice. So you start stacking the amount of controls you can have as you go through. <coughs> Great, thank you. Let's just make sure Lawrence is okay there. Okay, he's all right. Fantastic. Yeah, um, thanks, Lawrence. And, uh, Lawrence has alluded to uh, some some uh, diagrams that we've got that we'll we'll just show you now as we just try and explain some of those things um, with some uh, with some pictures. It'd be great to show you some video, but the video doesn't really work very well over this medium, so we've just got some static pictures to show you. But look, Lawrence has alluded to um, multi circuit control, as you can see on here. So we've got lighting circuits in different areas of the um, of the building here in three different areas um, and just one switch will control or could control all of the operations that we might find here we can control different groups um, as you can see blinds or uh, or lighting and so on so multi-circuit control we can also have um, a whole home control to get uh, as well which is uh, which is a really good function where is it this is what we call sometimes lawrence isn't it a last uh, last person in or last person yeah out you can have a last person in or last person out button where essentially you're leaving the home you can press a single button uh, and it sets the home to a set a set control level so you can either turn off or you can turn down anything you like really and that's that's great because we're not very good at turning all of our lights off are we when we leave the house um so it, it really does help us to to, to give that as, as it says there in the brackets that whole home control over uh, different aspects of the um of, of the premises so when we talk about um what type of control do we have with a, a a smart home we've already mentioned that we can put some scenario control into place um, and there's some bullet points on the slide there you can see controlling lights controlling blinds controlling heating but this is all at the same time from a single push of a button but they can all be personalized as well can't they lawrence they, they can yeah the same thing so so a scene is a really important aspect of of a home control system to be able to have built in uh, and and what essentially it means is you're you're not just controlling um a single type of product you're controlling multiple products at the same time and you might not actually need to be involved in that control so you could have a scene that's set up to actually react to the temperature outside or you could have a scene set up to react to where you are in the world um, and these can then uh, react in different ways so we could have lights come on we could have like i mentioned blinds or heating uh, you could have ways that a scene will trigger differently at different times of, uh, of day, for example. So um, in, in the morning, it might turn all of the downstairs lights on and the heating, but in the afternoon, it might turn most of the downstairs lights on uh, and the heating to a different level, or all, all as one scene with if-only conditions. So just to show you a couple of um, uh, images 
of what that might um, look like. As I said before, some video would be would be uh, would be lovely. But you can pick up some video from our website. So we'll just use the static images here. Um, a couple of pictures of the what we call a good night example here. So a simple press of a button with the good night scene that's been programmed in. We have the blinds come down, um, all the lights go off except for the bedroom lights. And they might dim down to a certain level, maybe 50 percent, 40 percent, whatever, whatever the comfort setting of the um, of the homeowner is in that scenario. It might change the, uh, the heating as well as, you know, we're on 19 degrees here. And then what might happen further is that the lights might come on or, or go off, I should say, after um, a, a timed setting. And then the heating comes down to a more comfortable um, uh, temperature for the duration of the night. So a good night example would work like that. But we can reverse that and have a, a morning example. So the morning example would be set up a little bit differently. Um, but what would happen would be at the touch of a button, the blinds open, the bedroom light activates, maybe uh, graduated dimming would uh, would happen. The en-suites come on, some audio might come on, the heating might come up, um, just giving us that huge flexibility. So there's the audio coming on and the heating coming up, of course, giving us that huge flexibility um, as we as we get up and, uh, and, 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 and face the day. So, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of control, um, we've got some um, some bus control wiring on there. So how does this work, Lawrence? Yeah, so um, it, automation controls in a couple of different ways, uh, primarily nowadays. Um, we either have proprietary wiring, which um, uh, Legrand have a system that uses proprietary wiring uh, using this two-wire bus um, that you can see here. Um, uh, and then uh, alternatively, there are different wireless options out there on the market now as well, including one that Legrand manufacture too. Um, so these are good in different scenarios and they're both adequate in, in almost every case. So you can, you can use them interchangeably, but sometimes it is better to use one compared to another. So in the, in the instance of bus cabling, I'll just explain how, how it works and what it does. Um, so you can see here um, uh, what you've got, rather than that uh, previous example you saw of a traditionally wired home, um, you had uh, all of your circuits uh, running back to a, um, a single uh, consumer unit, and then they would be run to their switches in the room. So you could have local control. Um, uh, rather than in that instance, what we've got is um, what you can see here is the home control enclosure where you've got all of your circuits run back to. So they don't run to a switch on the wall. They run straight back to a box under the stairs or in a comms room, wherever you want. And then all of our controls are running off of a separate two wire bus cable around the home. Uh, and what this enables you to do is have uh, controls that control that particular light that aren't actually local to that control to that light, for example, or to those to those blinds. So this can help sometimes with wiring. If you're in a stage where you're wiring a home um, and uh, you want to be able to control some lights, but you can't get a switch to them or, or, or etc. From there, uh, this is a really easy way of doing it because this is all a, a uh, control panel on the wall uh, and you can see here all we've got is a loop of a separate cable that goes around from there um, and then if you look at the alternative with uh, radio control wiring um, what you have is the uh, the home is run similarly to how it is in a traditional home excuse me Um, so what you've had, yeah, what you have is uh, your home is run traditionally, uh, and then what you do is replace the uh, the actual controls with an intelligent switch. So this is much easier for retrofit scenarios. So a lot of you guys will end up working um, in retrofit potentially initially, or, or, or you'll move into retrofit at some point in your careers. Um, because it's a massive market, you know, the, the majority of homes out there aren't being built. They're already they're already there. 
so the so this is where majority of us will work at some point in our lives. So what you can see here is an intelligent uh, switch on a traditional wiring infrastructure, but then you have a nice simple little controller here, which is the gateway to what's called a Zigbee network. And a Zigbee network is essentially like your Wi-Fi network, but it's locked down to the, those devices and that product. So it transmits on the same frequency as your Wi-Fi, but doesn't access the internet, doesn't have an open um, protocol out, out, outside to anywhere else. And having that also enables you to have some really nice wireless controls as well. So this in this scenario, potentially you've got someone, a homeowner, who wants to have bedside light controls, so they can turn their lights on from the bedside, but there's no cable run there. There's no possible way of running it because maybe you've got block walls or brick walls, uh, and it would be an absolute nightmare to try and uh, run some cable uh, down next to the bed. All you do in that scenario is replace the, um, the switch that's in the room already, take our um, wireless switch, uh, and then go through a little uh, programming scenario, and you've, uh, you've set up some wireless controls that you can control from here. Matt, I think we've got some slides on how that, uh, that goes later. Yeah, I think we have, Lawrence, yeah. So, um, in fact, I think this one just explains the, uh, the, the, the Zigbee mesh set up a little bit more um yeah can i, ha can I hand that one over to you lawrence with your yeah of course yeah so so what you can what everyone can see here or what i hope you can see here is this is your uh, uh wi-fi router and your wi-fi network uh, and your little uh control arc that you've got between your phone and the cloud and your wi-fi router this then would connect up to the to, to the gateway that you would install just from a spur off the lighting for example or or, or, or anywhere you need uh, and then from here your wired devices all create what's called a mesh network. And a mesh network essentially is everything talking both back to the home, uh, to, to the main hub and to all the other devices that it can reach. So what this means is if one drops off or if one is unreachable, then there's another route that it can go. So you can see here, uh, if this one, for instance, dropped off, um, or wasn't able to communicate with the with this network, it would be able to communicate with this switch, which would get back to here, or with this one and get back to here. And these create a really nice, robust wireless uh, network, which previously we weren't able to do. So, so wireless previously uh, was well known for being unreliable, uh, uh, a little bit spotty, uh, and difficult to, um, uh, to, to, to have in your back pocket as an option. Uh, nowadays, with the growth of mesh networks, with the growth of different communication protocols like Zigbee, you can have systems that are essentially as robust as wired um, uh, without needing to do the wiring. Now, that said, wiring will always hold a little bit of, uh, of additional support in there because you have a physical connection. So there will always be slightly more robustness to a wired network, uh, which is why it's quite often recommended in new build scenarios. Because if you can wire, really you should, because it's the best way to do it. But if you can't, if you have a scenario where either you're working with someone for a developer who doesn't want to put in different wiring, they want to upgrade the home, or if you're working in a retrofit scenario, wireless has really come on to the point where you can really rely on it now. Uh, and then you can see here, your wireless scenarios, these don't add to the mesh. They just sit on it uh, because they're unpowered unless you press the button. Uh, and what that does, it communicates through, has all the same reliability, but it doesn't piggyback the signal onto another device. Terrific. Thanks, Lawrence. And, and one of the beauties of, of this type of system uh, and there are many beauties. I mean, first of all, you've got the aesthetics of the product as well. It, it looks really clean. Um, so for a modern environment, it's absolutely lovely. But um, it's the simplicity of, of, of setup as well of actually using these products. Yeah. Um, I think in the old days, you know, there, there used to be a lot of difficulties with these types of systems, as Lawrence has alluded to as well. But these are very, very simple. So as, as you can see, there's only a few steps involved in setting up this kind of uh, system. Um, you know, after you install the devices, 
we turn the power on and we get LED indication. Uh, they all light up in red, so we know that they're all working. And effectively, it's it's almost as simple as we press the master switch, um, hold for a few seconds, and it creates the network to allow all of that beautiful system that Lawrence has explained to, to function properly. Um, and we've got all the traditional wiring accessories in here as well. We've got the smart sockets as well. You know, um, smart sockets have, have only been around very, very recently. Usually we have to buy um, a separate plug-in socket, don't we, with uh, some kind of uh, Wi-Fi connection that we can get for £11.50 off um, eBay or Amazon or something like that to, to, to do that with a separate app, that scenario we spoke about right before. But here we've got single sockets. We've got scenario controls. We've got all kinds of the typical devices you'd find in a house, but we also have twin socket outlets as well within this, uh, this, this range as well. But the association to allow it to work is, is so simple. Can you just explain how they, uh, how they connect up Lawrence? Yeah, this is super easy. Absolutely. One of the, the easiest products on the market now to, uh, to actually get going and get set up. So once you've uh, switched over all of your devices from traditional wiring, let's say we're in a retrofit, you've taken off all your switches, uh, you've taken out all your double sockets, all your sockets, and you've replaced them with the uh, nice snazzy RTL with Natapmo um, option instead. And then you've been asked to go and fit the wireless controls so that someone can have controls by the side of their bed. All you need to do uh, is go along with your uh, RTL with Natapmo wireless switch, press the button, tap it three times on the device that you want it to pair with. So the switch in the bedroom, for example, uh, and then once you've tapped that against there, those are paired, they're connected up. You simply then stick that to the wall. You can screw it to the wall if you want to, but you can stick it with um, uh, with adhesive pads. Uh, you can attach it with magnets if you really want to. It's probably more complicated than just screwing it on though. Uh, uh, and uh, you're fully, you're done, you're paired up. So now your wireless switch, when you press that button, will act in the same way as the switch you've got on the wall. So you can have that as a dimmer. You can dim your lights from uh, wirelessly. You can have them trigger other lights as well. If you need to, you just need to pair them up with other, other controls. So it's a really, really easy way of setting up um, devices now. We, ne we don't even need to get an app out. You know, we, we our previous product that we came out with, we got loads of uh, uh, praise from the, from, from the industry for taking away the need to have a laptop so you could do everything from the app. Now, we're taking away the need to have an app. You literally just need to go and fit these as you would have fitted any other uh, light switch, and it becomes a smart switch, and you're done. So it's a really fantastic way of getting into the market, uh, growing your confidence in, in smart home, and then building out into other products, more advanced products um, uh, down the line if you want to. Uh, so, so yeah, RTL with Natapmo is a fantastic range that really offers uh, all of the benefits that you could want. It's it's got that strong wireless mesh network. It's got the ability to fit it in any retrofit. Uh, it's got the really easy to configure wireless um, components. So, so you should be looking at all of these factors when you're looking at any product um, to, to decide on whether or not um, you want to go with, with that particular line, um, which you know we're, we're here with uh, Arta with Natatmo to, 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 to show you, so to speak. Any issues with uh, voice control, Lawrence? Absolutely not. Really easy to do. So you just um, uh, simply add your um, voice control um, credentials into the app that you've got. Uh, and then you can communicate with your um, components really easily from any of the big names. So we've got Google, Amazon and Apple all built in, as well as our own app. Uh, and what that does, and this is quite important because there's quite a few brands out there you can go to. Uh, that will work with one particular of the of the big three, or it will be actually a brand from one of those big three. Uh, and on the face of it, that looks great because you've got you know direct connection with the brand that manufactures it, um, and, and you can be sure that you know this is a big big brand behind it. It's even bigger than Legrand, which is great. However, you do then limit yourself to that to that particular ecosystem and that ecosystem alone. And so in the future, if you decide to change your phone um, because you can get a better tariff, for example, the most boring reason you can think of, um, suddenly your home doesn't work quite as well as, as it previously did. So a home is going to be our biggest investment that we ever make. 
we shouldn't be limiting how we control it by going with one particular brand or another. We should go with a brand uh, like Legrand who can work with any of the big three. We're big enough to command their respect, but uh, easily enough to work with all of them as well. Um, uh, and, and this just really blows up what you can control uh, in the home. You can add in any of the different devices that these three that these three manufacture, and be confident that they'll work. Terrific, thank you, Lawrence. <clears throat> Having said all of that so far, um, that's not actually all we can do either. So we can start to make our scenes even smarter. And Lawrence has alluded to that already with some of the scenario controls that we can do um but we can start to add um, what we call variables to to the scenes as well so a variable be might be something like is it daytime is it nighttime um it, in in really simple terms so we can add these variables and conditions preset conditions program conditions and so on that we can put into our scenes to to allow them to react there's just a little graphic at the bottom there with with some of the examples, weather conditions, you know, daytime, nighttime and so on and so forth. And I think we've got a couple of examples here on the next couple of slides where we're utilizing um, variables. So I'm going to ask you again, Lawrence, if you could just explain uh, the, the following. I think it's geolocation and yeah. notifications. Sure. So uh, so geolocation is a um, uh, essentially a way of uh, knowing where you are relative to another another device. Uh, so you could call it tracking. It does in in our application. It doesn't actually track you. It doesn't know where. It doesn't know specifically where you are at all times. Uh, it will just recognise when you've crossed what's called a geo gate. So this is an imaginary line that you indicate on uh, on one of your apps that you're using, and then make that the trigger for something to happen in your home or around your home. So if you're lucky enough to have gates, then you could have the trigger be when I get 100 yards from the house or 100 meters from the house, um, open the gates. And you can have the gates then open from there. <coughs> you could also have um, geolocation react to if you get further away. So when you leave in the morning, you could have your temperature um, drop down once you're a mile away from the house. So you can have these things start to react for you, your home start to work for you to help save energy, save cost, uh, uh, deter criminals, for example. You can have lights come on when you're away from the home at different times uh, so that you can um, give the impression that you're home, for example. Uh, all of these things are unlocked if you have a product that includes something like geolocation built in. Um, and what we can also do is combine geolocation with some of our other services or some other services. So um, uh, geolocation, you might have working with uh, a weather app as well that's built in. So this would mean that not only do you have uh, the ability to turn on lights when you're 100 yards away from your home up the driveway, but you have that set so that that only comes on when it's foggy or when it's bad weather or, or when it's nighttime. So you could have these things start to work for you. A great example that I had uh, a few months ago was someone had uh, an awning on their home and it was rated at a certain wind speed. Uh, and they set up a scene so that when there was heavy wind, it would draw the awning in automatically. So this saves them hundreds of pounds in um, having to replace that awning if it's left on or left open accidentally when there's gonna be high winds. So all of these things, your home can start to react to the, the uh, experience around you without you needing to be involved. Uh, and that automatically starts racking up savings in cost, racking up savings in energy, uh, and just makes your life a little bit easier as well. You know, you don't have to f fiddle about with uh, with your keys in the dark because the, the light's not been turned on. Um, it, it will automatically come on for you even without needing a PIR. Um, so th these are all things that add to uh, the benefits of going with a smart home instead. And then we've just got one more, um, one more example, Lawrence, if you could. 
Yeah, and so it's all well and good for your home to be acting on your behalf, doing things for you. But sometimes you want to be uh, advised or informed about some some of these things that are happening. So um, it, what we've got here is an example of some of our security products uh, in our Netatmo range. So uh, this is sending you a notification when it sees an unrecognized face. So it sees a face, not that you'd be able to, to tell anymore. Everyone wears a mask. Um, but uh, uh, if it doesn't recognize it, it will send you a notification. You can then react. In fact, my uh, my phone is just sending me a few now with, with my um, uh, uh, with my camera seeing my dog walker uh, when he's got home. Uh, and what this is able to do is just give you that communication, gives you that feedback back to your back to your phone, so that you're still in the loop. Your home is acting on your behalf, but you're still in the loop. You're still seeing what these things are doing. Great, thank you. And we can even um, begin to advance the type of control that we have as well. So we can start integrating things like touchscreen controls. Um, and the, 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 the beauty of a touchscreen is they, 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 first of all, they're aesthetically pleasing. They look very, very nice, as, as you can see from the example on the slide there. But we can control pretty much everything that we want with a, with a touchscreen. We've got unlimited flexibility, I think would be, uh, would be true to say, Lawrence on a, on a touch screen um you know we can we can do all of these things that you can see on the bullet points on the left hand side and it's just bringing you wouldn't have one of these in every single room of the house i very much doubt but you might have it as a central hub perhaps in um in the kitchen um, yeah or, or, or the lounge perhaps um, yeah quite or, often or um a touch screen acts as the hub for your home so it acts as the way the place that you can go at all times even if you've put your phone down or if the wife has taken your iPad up to go and buy shoes upstairs or whatever, uh, you can always go to a single point and control any aspect of your home that you've got set up on, on that touchscreen. They also become, in systems that integrate door entry um, solutions like ours does, they become the door entry uh, screen um, for the house. So uh, these aren't just used in large uh, uh, mansions and big homes. These are used very often in apartments uh, uh, that have home control built in. We've got um, hundreds of apartments across London, for example, uh, that use these products because um, uh, they, they add, they combine a lot of different products that you would have had to have anyway. So they combine your thermostat into one place. They bring your, some of the light controls into one place. They act as the door entry panel, which you have to have in nearly any um, installation in, in London nowadays. Uh, and they act as your blind controls as well. So all of these just come into a simple, easy to use uh, single point around the home. Uh, and it really does up the um, uh, up the controllability and the, like you said, the aesthetic of that of that particular property. So touchscreens are a great little function or feature to have in a system. And really just to reiterate the uh, the ease of control um, voice control over all of these devices and we're not locked into any particular system as Lawrence has explained before. Um, in terms of what can we control, it's pretty much everything, you know, in terms of lighting, you, you can see the typical examples on the left hand side. So our systems will work with all of these different types of lighting, but also with um, with uh, motors and so on as well. We've got left and right for blinds, up and down for blinds or curtains and on offs for fans. So most types of controls these days will um, will be able to be um, integrated, if you like, mm. into these into these systems. The, the big takeaway from um, for, from this from this slide, I'll just jump back um, quickly here, is that you don't need to have a proprietary um, uh, lamp uh, to be able to have a smart system. You can have a uh, bog standard GU10 from um, CEF or Rexel, wherever you like, um, uh, that you can fit into uh, a, another system. So our system can control any, any type of lamp, uh, any type of motor. But also, we can control proprietary stuff if we need to. So Philips Hue, for example, we can control for color changing or um, uh, Somfy for, for your blinds. So you can have proprietary devices brought in. 
But in a lot of ways, it's better to go with your, your non-proprietary devices because then it's easier in the long run. People can upgrade whenever they want. They don't need to worry about having to stick to a particular brand of lamp or, or, or anything like that as they go through. They can just um, fit and forget, essentially. Uh, so that, that's the big takeaway to, 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 to have from this one. Thank you, Lawrence. So let's uh, let's just touch on heating uh, for for a few minutes. Um, and what we've got here is uh, is is our graphic of our house again. Traditional heating system, boiler, pump, radiators around the house. Um, there's a single room thermostat. <clears throat> All we can really do here is control the heating that's in the living room, can't we? This is this is the typical setup. There's no smart control over um over this um it's it's very inefficient but this is something that we tend to find in you know all of the traditional building stock that will uh, that will have in the uk so if you just advance on to the smart home heating um we can begin to to do a lot more intelligent things here we can integrate thermostats into each room so we're not just heating empty spaces we're actually controlling what we can do in all of the individual areas of the of the home with the smart heating control. Um, we can independently control, have total flexibility in our um, expenditure, in our costs, um, because one of the one of the things we're very very good at um, in this world is 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 heating great big empty spaces. So this is allowing us to 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 have much more flexible control over um over our costs that we have in terms of heating and we all know that heating costs are going up and up these days aren't they it's in the news almost every day um, at the moment so lawrence can you just explain a little bit more for a couple of minutes on heating uh yeah ju just sort of to, to to briefly touch on on heating as a as an aspect you know for, for those of us in the electrical side of the trade can be a bit of a dark art um, uh, but essentially what we're able to do is um, fit very simple controls, either um, uh, radiator mounted TRVs uh, that can act independently and use uh, an, an algorithm built into their function to um, be able to control what temperature they come on at and what time they come on at. Or if you go with the bus, the bus wired option, uh, you could have zone valves that are independently controlled um, by each room. So essentially what you have it moves away from having this single um, uh, mono zone of control in the um, uh, in your single thermostat or even your double thermostat upstairs and down uh, to be a being able to have control in each room individually. Uh, and this is very easy to achieve, even if you've got underfloor heating, even if you've got electric underfloor heating, um, uh, anything is, is is possible with a smart heating system. Um, and um, some of the, uh, the uh, abilities you get from this and the savings you can get are enormous. You know, they, they, we've done uh, market research that, that says you can save 37% of your energy bill nearly 40% of your energy bill just by fitting a uh, fairly cost-effective um, smart heating system. Uh, and there's there's different ways that they work. So we've got a few different options at, at Legrand. We have the My Home solution, uh, which is the bus-wide option. Uh, we've also got the Netatmo uh, solution. So Netatmo uses um, more of an algorithm to control how it heats your home. So it will figure out actually how, uh, what's called the thermal inertia of a particular room. Um, so if you've got a TRV in that room, it will figure out how long it takes to heat that room from a set temperature to another temperature. And then it will de decide, actually, I need to turn the boiler on 20 minutes sooner than what you said you want the boiler turned on to achieve that temperature. But I can also make sure I turn the boiler off 20 minutes sooner than you uh, had originally intended because you can actually, it, it starts to figure out when to turn the boiler on at exactly the right time to heat your home optimally so that you're saving energy and being comfortable at the same time. Um, <coughs> these sort of features are built into all kinds of our products and all kinds of products on the market. It's well worth just spending a little bit of time to sort of familiarize yourself with the heating side of the industry because this will become more and more of a driver compared to the lighting or, or, or audio or blinds. 
Thanks, Lawrence. And <clears throat> in terms of control, again, we looked at lighting control a minute ago. In terms of heating control, uh, it, it's all of these things. You know, all of these things can be controlled using these systems. So um, we're nearing, I'm just a little bit conscious of the time. We'll skip through these rather uh, rather quickly now, but we're nearly at the end. So we just got the single slide on, um, on uh, music or uh, audio control. Um, Lawrence, can you one minute on audio? Yeah. Uh, so audio, it's not all about saving uh, money when, when you when you get a home. It's not all about trying to eke out the the, 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 the savings and the energy, etc. Sometimes we want to enjoy some of the places we live. So it's really easy to do that when you can integrate different AV solutions into a home control system. So in this case, we've got our uh, Nuvo audio system, which um, it, it currently um, provides you multi-room audio around the home. Um, uh, this could be music from different places uh, at different volume levels in different rooms all at the same time. Um, and, and it just gives you this really uh, extra feature of your home that you can that you can use to enjoy. So sometimes it's not all about be, uh, bean counting and money saving. Sometimes it's about getting something that you really enjoy and you can have, you know, some music blaring out at 2 a.m. if you really want to um, from every room in your house. I know Matt does. <laughs> Thanks, Lawrence um terrific so <clears throat> in terms of um you know summarizing we've we, we, we've talked about all of these things on the um on the slide lawrence has given some great examples um that that, that, that we can look at the real life examples um but one of the fundamental things here is we're talking about a system approach so we talk about how do you deliver smart functionality through the home but it's via a system approach it's not those individual components that we can buy for different functions it's having a system that will deliver all of these things um in operation together and and when you when you look at them when you think of them you think well that there, there's an awful lot going on there but you've got centralized control that's so simple to use these days so simple to install as well as we saw earlier with the um some of the wiring examples that lawrence, lawrence talked us through having the voice control for all of these things as well um, just makes it very, very easy to configure and reconfigure as well, Lawrence. Is, that's right, isn't it? Once you've, once, mm. you've, um, once you've set your scenarios, they're not set for life, are they? They can be changed. Indeed, yeah. Yeah, so this is the whole uh, ethos behind a lot of our products is uh, – nothing is a point is is a single point in time we're always on a on a on a sort of spectrum of changing the way we live the the, the way we want to to live you know sometimes when the winter comes around all the leaves fall off the trees outside so you suddenly the light that you had in your kitchen is completely different in the winter as it is in the summer so you want to be able to change that somewhat over different scenes at different times and you want to have that at the touch of, uh, of a button you don't want to be able to you don't want to have to call in someone and, and and you guys if you got into this wouldn't necessarily want to have to be called out every uh, few months by the same client because you know essentially it doesn't make you that 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 bank if you if you want to call it that it doesn't doesn't give you that ability to go out there and, and capture new jobs as you're going through yeah and and clearly a lot of this is around efficiency as well um, and, and so there are actually some good business opportunities to be had here in the years to come, especially when you think about those net zero targets that were said before 2030 and 2050 um, and, and changing the existing building stock for these kinds of systems so that we can bring that efficiency to those buildings. There's some great, great opportunities in, in, this, um, in this area for, for people in the future. So. Oh, well, now as well, not only in the future. So, um, Alana, we've come to the q and I think you wanted to bring a, a survey up, didn't you, before we look and how, uh, see what questions might have come in? Yeah, um, so hi, guys. So um, we're just going to do a survey before we go into the Q&A. We'd really appreciate it if you can fill it out. Um, it just really helps us to know whether you're enjoying our webinars and it, it's useful for us for future webinars as well. So please fill it out. Thank you.
And um, once you guys have filled out the survey, if you just pop your questions into the chat box as well, then we can move on to the Q&A and we can answer those for you as well. Okay, guys, we're going to leave up just for a few more minutes. Um, please do fill it out. It's really helpful for us. It's really helpful for Lawrence and I as well because it helps us to uh, work out whether we've done a good job or not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we've done a bad job, I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think we're going to move on to the... Um, the Q&A now um, but we don't actually have any questions so I'm going to leave the survey up until anyone has a question because I can see someone is typing so um, and then we'll move on okay <clears throat> a question I could ask Lawrence is you know when we were talking about the uh, the wireless um, equipment so you have a wireless switch presumably that has a battery inside it uh, so yeah, there's two ways of doing it. So um, if you want to have a really uh, sort of light touch device where you you essentially feel like you're um, uh, uh, you're touching a touch screen, then you would have a battery uh, included. Um, if that wasn't so important uh, and you wanted to be able to um, uh, have a batteryless um, function, so that it actually generated the power as uh, to, to send the command as you pressed it, then there is a kinetic option instead, where as you physically press the button, um, it, it passes through a magnet, generates enough power for you to actually send the command that you want to. Um, so there's two options um, for, from Legrand at least, uh, and there's lots of other uh, uh, brands that do kinetic type and, and, and battery uh, wireless options. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, the the they're both they're both uh, great for depending on the situation you've got. Okay, what's the type of uh, battery life that we might expect if we went down the battery route? So um, on the whole, we've tested them. Um, uh, our options go to eight years. Um, uh, so they 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 and that's with um, uh, a certain number of thousand um, activations a day over that over that time period. I can't remember how many, or not thousand applications a day, thousand applications a year over that eight uh, over that eight year period. Um, I can't remember exactly how many it is, but it but it's significant. So you you do get a long battery life, and they're very easy to change over as well. Once they do once they do end, um, uh, it's just a case of popping the um, the device off the wall taking the faceplate off and replacing the battery. So it's so nice and easy. Um, but like I said, if battery life is a concern, then it would be best to go for the kinetic version instead. Great, thank you. Um, so Adrian's question is up on the screen there. Will there be a CPD certificate available for this presentation? That's over to you, Matt, CPD yeah, manager. So, Alana, would, do, do you generate Voltimum CPD certificates? So um, we do generate certificates. Um, I'm not sure if this one will be uh, actual CPD, like officially, but you can obviously always use this for um, tracking special development, you know, just to say you've attended, you know, webinars and training, but it won't be actually a CPD kind of certified webinar, this one. With with CPD, we have to be a little bit more, um, uh, uh, less less partisan. So to speak, we've got to be a little yeah. bit more open, open-handed for every for all the other brands than we've been yeah. today. No, normally, with uh, with CPD, we don't mention our products quite so much, uh, and 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 and, uh, and and bring that up. Um, but yeah. uh, today was, was was a bit of an exception. Yeah, the rules of CPD that uh, they have to remain absolutely generic, don't they? So it can be difficult sometimes to um, to work out where to where to 
pitch it as question just coming from uh, from brian thank you for your question i'll just yeah. read, read this out how do you assure customers that their newly installed smart home won't become obsolete in a few years yeah this is a fantastic question so um uh, in terms of you have to if you if you're looking at in general um uh, you have to um uh, ensure you're going with a well-known brand uh, that that brand is not known for um uh, discontinuing products at the drop of a hat uh, or, or as they've come through um very quickly so even some of the biggest brands out there um uh, do discontinue products very rapidly because they have a very rapid um uh, development uh, time period you, i'm talking about essentially your big three silicon valley um uh, companies that we've already spoken about um when you're talking about a brand like Le Grand, if we're talking specifically about Le Grand products, um, uh, all of our products come with um, uh, the, a warranty. So all of our Natatmo products have a four-year warranty on them. Uh, and we have a development ethos designed around uh, 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 specifically against programmed obsolescence. So programmed obsolescence is a, uh, a term used for when you specifically uh, create a product that you intend to make obsolete in a few years time to trap customers into buying a new version of your product so legrand has always been against that uh, it's it we create infrastructure products that are built into the infrastructure of a home uh, and rather than a gadget that can be easily replaced so because we don't produce any really easily replaceable products even though they're easy to install uh, all of our products are designed to last. Um, so, so pointing out to customers that a this is a a, a big brand in the electrical industry. Uh, B it's, it's it's got this design ethos around uh, ensuring that your devices are um, uh, going to last for the, the lifetime of the home, uh, and that um, uh, that they're backed by. Uh, long warranties in, in comparison to most electrical products. Uh, so these are three three big uh, reasons to go with a, a brand like Legrand, as opposed to even a larger brand like some of the big three um, Silicon Valley ones that you've got there. So next question, are your products Wi-Fi 6 enabled? Um, I'll just have to check on uh, all of them, but on the whole, our products don't use um, Wi-Fi as their communication protocol. They, they would either use cabled infrastructure like we've talked about, or they would use um, the Zigbee uh, network uh, that we've talked about. So uh, there are some of our products that are, um, are on your Wi-Fi network, specifically our Netatmo um, indoor cameras, um, et cetera. And in all honesty, I'll have to go away and double check that for you, Graham. Uh, and come and come back for you but I, I i am pretty confident that they are um but on the whole our products use um non-proprietary but separate communication um so that you don't have to be concerned about big uh infrastructure shifts like the shift over for into wi-fi 6 uh in the long run okay so that's all the questions we have so thank you everybody for attending and thank you Lawrence and Matt for doing this awesome webinar. Um, we will be putting this on the Academy so you can access it again if if, if you need to. Um, that's it, so thank you very much. Terrific, thanks Alana Brilliant. for uh, inviting us along. Thank you Lawrence and thanks everybody for uh, giving up your time to, to join us today. Take care of yourselves and stay safe. Yeah, yeah. thanks folks, good to speak to you. All right, bye everyone.